In this video I want to discuss some of the benefits in adding salt to a fish pond or an aquarium. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and visit my website ozponds.com. Salt is a useful additive in a pond as it can help with osmosis and improving the slime coat on fish. In freshwater fish, the salt concentrations of the water inside their bodies is higher than the freshwater environments in which they live. And as water enters the fish's body, there's a natural tendency for salts within the fish's body to diffuse out into the surrounding water since the concentration of salts is higher inside the fish than the surrounding fresh water. So to counteract this loss of salts, freshwater fish have specialized cells these actively transport salts back into their body, but this process requires quite a bit of energy. If there is some salt in the water, it can help make this whole process less energy intensive. And this is but one reason why it's common to see people recommend salt treatments for unwell fish. Another reason is that salt can kill certain bacteria and parasites that may be attacking the fish. So by providing the fish with something that will reduce their energy needs and help attack bacteria or parasites that they are also fighting, it's a pretty good natural treatment. And it's much cheaper than other medications that you can buy off the shelves. So how much salt should you add? Fresh water is generally considered anything under 0.3% salt. Salt water in the ocean is about 3.5%. So in our ponds, we aim to keep the salt concentrations under 0.3%. That works out to be three parts per thousand, which translates to three grams per litre. <laughs> That's the beauty of the metric system. It's much easier to do such calculations. In the US, a gallon is 3.8 litres, an ounce is 28 grams. And if this math is correct, three parts per thousand would be 0.41 ounces per gallon. And that's too complex for my tiny brain. But with that said, if we need to treat a fish with salt, it's better to remove the fish from the pond so we can just treat that fish rather than the whole pond. It seems most fish can tolerate 0.6% salinity or six parts per thousand, which would be six grams per litre if you were mixing it up. Native fish to Australia can go much higher, 10 to 15 parts per thousand. So it pays to do a little research on the fish you're about to treat, as they're not all the same. Salt is also useful as a way of quarantining new fish or wild caught fish in the wild. The other thing about salt is that most fish seem to be quite adapt at the level of salt going up suddenly, but not so much to it dropping suddenly. So if you are treating a fish in a salt concentration that is higher than the pond, that they're going to return to, you want to decrease the salinity level slowly over a few days. You do this by doing water changes. Salts don't evaporate, so even if the quarantine pond or tank goes down through evaporation and you're topping up with fresh water, the salinity is pretty much the same as it was on day one. And it's the same if you're doing water changes to maintain the clean water. Salt would need to be added to the water changed out to maintain salinity. I hope that makes sense. Another question is what type of salt? Well, it seems you can use any sort of salt, which is sodium chloride, but you should avoid any salt that has added iodine. To check your salinity levels, you can use a digital salinity meter. A few months, maybe even a year ago, I got sent a seven in one aquarium monitor from a company called Cactoily. It measures all kinds of different parameters, salinity being one. It's probably a handy little unit for people that want to constantly monitor their pH, salinity, temperature and redox potential. You could also use a fractometer. I'm in the process of setting up my first ever salt water aquarium and I purchased a refractometer so I could measure my salinity. Another common question about salt is will it kill the nitrifying bacteria? And it shouldn't at the rates I've talked about in this video. I mean, I'm relying on nitrifying bacteria in my saltwater tank, and that's way higher than the doses you'll treat any freshwater fish. So what about plants? Yes, salt in too high doses will kill plants, 
Again, that's another reason why you don't want to treat a whole pond if you're going above the salt level that's considered fresh water. So should you add salt to your pond? Well, with anything I ever talk about, it depends. For me, I focus on water filtration and providing a habitat that's natural. The most common reason for poor fish health is due to poor water quality. Good filtration helps, but if you're overfeeding or you have an overstocked pond, or something's decaying inside the pond, leaves are okay, but something like a large fish or maybe even a land-based animal that drowned, that can cause issues with water quality. For me, optimal water quality is the first thing. In my ponds, I like them to look natural and I filter using bulk filters. If you're interested in bulk filtration, you can learn lots more by visiting my website or scrolling through my previous uploads on YouTube. So I don't personally add salt to any of my ponds, but I do to some of my aquariums where I have more fish and I do feed them quite often. If I were keeping an overstocked koi pond, I might consider adding some salt. I hope this video has been helpful. It's not something I'm really well versed in, but this is just the basics because it's something I've been asked quite a bit about. And so if I mucked up any of the calculations, my advice was bad, or even if it was good, let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.